From Eyewitness News, this is Newsmakers. An exclusive Eyewitness News Providence Journal poll shows Providence Mayor Angel Tavares is still enjoying strong job approval numbers. A survey of 500 registered voters shows 57% say Tavares is doing an excellent or good job as mayor, while 25% say he's doing a fair or poor job. Meanwhile, his potential Democratic challenger, State Treasurer Gina Raimondo, isn't doing so shabby either. 51% give her an excellent or good job approval. 32% say fair or poor. Then there's Clay Pell, who earlier this week filed with the Board of Elections for a potential run as a Democratic candidate for governor. At this time, people do not know who Clay Pell is. Despite the name, 60% of those polled couldn't give us an opinion of the late Senator Claiborne Pell's grandson. This week on Newsmakers, a political roundtable examines Pell's potential impact on the Democratic primary and breaks down the results from our exclusive poll. Welcome to Newsmakers, I'm Tim White. Joining me this week on the Political Roundtable, WPRI.com reporter Ted Nisi, Eyewitness News analyst Arlene Violet, and we have Providence Journal columnist Ed Fitzpatrick and Eyewitness News political analyst and pollster Joe Fleming. Hello, everybody. Hello. This feels Hello. like a, uh, an, a preview to Thanksgiving, all of us sitting around on the table like this. And we'll tell you who the turkeys are. <laughs> um, all right, let's go around the table and uh, tackle the question that I, I brought up in the open there, and that is Clay Pell. If he enters the race as a Democrat, who does he help in a potential primary uh, matchup? Mayor Angel Tavares or Treasurer Gina Raimondo? Again, the question is who does he help in a primary, Ted? Ramondo. Ditto, Ramondo. Going with Ramondo. Gina Ramondo. Why, Joe? Well, for the simple reason, Clay Pell, I believe, will draw a good deal of the progressive votes in the Democratic Party and a good deal of the labor votes in the Democratic Party. Uh, obviously, labor is not one but the Gina Ramondo. Uh, and by default, I think Andrew Tavares would get that labor vote in a two way race. But in a three way race, I think they will warm up to Claiborne, Clay Pell. And I think that's going to hurt Angel Tavares in the end. All right. Anyone have anything to add to that? Is that the pretty much the assessment? You all agree with that? He's, he's going to pull from the unions, and you know we're hearing that already. He has some unions whispering in his ear. Uh, is that going to be the? Uh, well, I think particularly because um, Tavares doesn't have a ton of money like Gina Raimondo does, and while money isn't everything, Clay Pell both has at least some personal wealth. Mm -hmm. We all think he can tap. He and his wife Michelle Kwan. And, you know, Angel Tavares was going to need the union ground game. You know, we always say Bob Walsh and the NEA, uh, the teachers union, really won Lincoln Chafee, the governor's office, in a lot of ways in 2010. And that kind of ground game could have made up for some of the financial disadvantage. If Angel Tavares is caught without a lot of money and without the, the troops from the union movement, he's going to have a harder time. And a Democratic primary is Trino. And the unions can turn their vote out in the Democratic primary. Yeah, here, but here's a guy, uh, Ed, that we don't know much about. Um, well, that's the thing. We can only guess, right? Because he hasn't uh, sat down with any reporters to talk about why he's interested in running for governor or where he stands on the major issues of the day. So he needs to do that. And until then, we, we can only guess at where he stands. I mean, what we do know is that he's been meeting with, you know, he met with the uh, NEA. He met with the Rhode Island Progressive Democrats. So uh, I guess you can infer something from that. But we need to hear what he has to say. So you, while it's true that he takes away, mm -hmm. as we all agree, uh, from Tavares, the real issue, though, is, uh, but is he a mixed blessing because he's going to beat Raimondo in the final analysis, given the pedigree of the name, starstruck uh, Rhode Island public mm -hmm. with Michelle Kwan by his side, and he doesn't have any baggage in a sense right. other than what he now creates for himself. Well, I think that's where he's going to try to come right down the middle if he decides to run and be an alternative to the two candidates that are there now. I have no baggage. I'm a Rhode Islander, but I've been out of the state. I have state. no baggage, but I have no experience either. No experience either, but I think he's going to try to position himself as Rhode Island. He's a fresh face, somebody brand new with new ideas to try to turn the state around. Ed, when you went to his house, was Michelle Kwan there? Yeah, she answered the door. I, you know, I, I, I was uh, after uh, the Mayor Tavares announced that everybody was talking about will Clay Pell jump in. So I said, "Well, I'll stop by. He's, in the, he's on the way home." Some old-fashioned reporting there. Ed. So, I like it. Yeah. So <laughs> Michelle Kwan answered the door, he, and he called a little while later. He, but he didn't say much. All he said was, "You know, I'm going to take a month to uh, do, use the word serious a lot. I'm going to do a very serious analysis of whether I, you know I'm taking a serious look at it and things like you that." Know. One thing is interesting. Bill Fisher uh, is really the only staffer we know associated with Clay Pell right now. He, of course 
course, was very close to uh, Sheldon Whitehouse, worked for him when Whitehouse was the Attorney General. So, you know, you have that Newport connection down there. It's, it's interesting to see. Yeah, and actually, I reached out to Mr. Pell for, to do an interview for this mm -hmm. poll, and Bill Fisher wrote back, politely declining an interview. But you would think with 60% unknown, free airtime might be uh, top of the but list. I don't think that's a problem for him because right. he has the money to get himself known. Once he decides if he's running, I think then you will see him get himself known. All right, let's let's move on. I want to move on to the Democrats and how some, uh, and I'm going to bring up some numbers here on the screen, how Democrats feel about uh, Mayor Tavares and uh, General Treasurer Gina Raimondo in terms of job performance. Here is uh, Angel Tavares's job approval numbers. And again, this is just for Democrats. 67% of Democrats we polled say he does an excellent or good job. 19% say fair or poor, while 14% aren't sure. Now, General Treasurer Gina Raimondo, not as strong a uh, foothold with her party. 51% of Democrats say she's doing an excellent or good job. 31% say fair or poor. There are the numbers, and 18% aren't sure. Our poll shows, um, you know, the other cross tab here, and I want your input, Arlene, on this, is our poll shows Gina runs weaker with women than Angel. Um, what do you make of that? I think traditionally women do not support women. I remember having this discussion with Lyda Sappensley, Susie Farmer, mm -hmm. and also Claudine Schneider. And everyone, including myself, bemoaned the fact that women tend not to support other women. Uh, I don't know whether there's a jealousy factor or what, but men, uh, or every one of us had strong men uh, support uh, in, our, in our candidacy. So, What does Gina have to do um, to get over the you know seemingly weaker numbers with uh, Democrats. I realize we have some time here. She hasn't even officially entered the race, so she hasn't had a chance to define herself and get out there and get her message. But When we did this poll a year ago, Gina's job rating among Democrats was, uh, was a, a little bit 59 percent, so she's dropped about 8 percent. You can look in this cross tab and see what happened. In 2012, she was getting 60 percent favorable job rating from the unions. Now it's down to 42%. Union members in Rhode Island are Democrats. Mm -hmm. And as a result, her Democratic number has dropped. It's that simple. Uh, I think in our survey, 47% said they were, of the union members said they were Democrats, only 6% Republicans. So if the unions are starting to really go against her, and I think over the last year, they've done a lot of work demonizing her among union members. Mm -hmm. And it's turned, that's why her Democratic numbers are down. Yeah. Yeah, and as you were saying, Joe, the other day, her claim to fame, the, the pension overhaul mm -hmm. is in the, in the past now, and but she does have the money, $2.3 right. million dollars in the campaign account to remind people of that and to get her message out. But yeah, yeah, I mean, she's got a super PAC called Lead Her Ship, you know, so her claim is that she's going to provide the leadership to do something about the economy, is, which is the big issue. Mm -hmm. She's and starting down the Doherty Road, though, of letting people define her. Uh, and those results, it doesn't matter objectively. I mean, a whole other argument is she mm -hmm. saved the pension for all yeah. those working women and everybody else, and she should be the heroine of the piece. But she's holding back, and but she's getting clobbered. I don't see that continuing anti due to the fact she has a new person on board, Eric Hyers who knows about defining a campaign because he did it for David Cicilline and defined Brenda right. Dougherty. I don't think he's going to let that happen to her campaign. I think you're going to continue see to happen. It, continue to happen. Right. I think after the first year, they're going to go on the offensive as soon as she announces that she is running for governor. And, and one I, thing and to watch closely is her, you know, we already talked, you said it, she has $2.3 million, which is right. Don't forget how Rhode Island campaign finance yep. works. When January 1st arrives, you can raise as a candidate $1,000 all over again from everyone who's given to in previous right. years. It's not like a presidential campaign finance right. in a federal race. So in theory, she could double that to 4.6 just by getting the exact same amount from every person who's given her before. I mean, I guess maybe not exactly because mm -hmm. some people might have already given multiple times, but you know, she can get a huge chunk of that money again if those people are still with her and willing to support her. One of the things that has died down um, in the past couple of weeks was there was a lot of talk, will she run as an independent, will she run as an independent? She came on the show, she sat right here, she was not ambiguous, mm -hmm. she's a Democrat through and through, then she hires Eric Hires, and you can't see her running as anything else but a Democrat uh, with Eric Hires on her staff. Is there any question anymore? Uh, with Gina Raimondo, that not in my I don't mind. think so. Okay. I don't think. So. I don't think Eric. I don't think someone like Eric Hires joins that campaign along with some of the others who are now alongside her, thinking she's going to be an, an independent. 
Right. And Hayes has to be pleased to be starting with a candidate with a 51% <laughs> approval rating as opposed to Cicilline uh, yes. 15. Uh, yeah. <laughs> True. And a, and a pretty point. fat wallet at that, yeah. going, going, going into it. All right, let's talk about the other uh, looming primary, and that is with Republicans, Cranston Mayor Alan Fung and Barrington businessman uh, moderate turned Republican Ken Block. And I want to talk about how Republicans feel about uh, uh, these two, but sort of with a, a dose of salt, uh, you know, a grain of salt, because yep. when you look at uh, the crosstabs on this, um, it, it's 16 percent of the 500 voters, so it's a very right. small chunk of Correct. people out there that we're polling. That being said, Joe, are you surprised to see Block doesn't do as bad with Republicans? Well, I think that's very key in the survey. If I'm Ken Block, I look at these numbers and say, wow, this is just what I wanted to see out of a survey. 47% of Republicans give me, have a favorable opinion of me. Only 6% don't, and 47% don't know who I am. And we have that graphic and on the And statewide, right it's only 23% with a favorable opinion. But he's in a Republican primary. These are the voters he has to be focused on right now. And I assume when he did his poll earlier before he announced for governor, he probably got numbers that show similar to the same thing, that if I run as a Republican, right now they're open to me. But we're going to have to see how the campaign gets defined and how he's defined by Alan Fung as the campaign moves on. But right now, if I'm Ken Block, I'm encouraged by these internal numbers as a Republican. I agree, and I think, uh, you know, if you look over at Alan Fung's numbers uh, with Republicans, Alan Fung has a 52% positive job rating right. among Republicans. Now, you know, uh, that's not directly comparable to what we saw there with Ken Block, because that's a favorable rating, right. but that what you see there is, look at Angel Tavares among Democrats. Angel Tavares is at 67% approval among Democrats. That's We see that as a strong mm -hmm. support within the party. Cranston Marilyn Fung at 52%. That's Gina Raimondo territory in his own party. He needs to bring that up and really convince more Republicans. He's a standard bearer. He's our guy. So is this going to be a who do Republicans hate less primary? No, I, between? Think, they, no. No, I think they're going to like both. It's going to be an organization right. uh, primary. It's get out that vote. Uh, he, uh, Fung, of course, has both Cranston, his friend Abadizian, who theoretically remain neutral, but he has an operation uh, in Warwick, so I think Ken has his uh, trouble ahead his just getting the him. votes to, to arrive, even though theoretically hey, they what like is a, What is the primary turnout? Well, I was going to say, in Rhode Island, 16. a Republican primary could be as low as 12,000 12, Republican voters, up as high as maybe 44, 45,000 when Chafee and Laffey had their Republican primary. So these two campaigns need to zero in on those 40-some thousand voters and direct their whole campaign at them, not the general population. The school of thought is a large turnout helps Gina Raimondo in the Democratic primary. Who does a large turnout, relatively speaking, in a Republican primary help? Ken Block or, or Alan I'll Fung? be honest, I'm not sure who it would help. Uh -huh. I mean, obviously, Alan Fung is a base of support in Cranston and next door in Warwick. I would assume with Scott Avedesian have a great deal of support. But I don't know who the big turnout would help at this point. Before we go to break, I want to bring up a topic staying on uh, the Republican primary. And uh, some might say it's sort of a curious move by Ken Block. And that is he has said that if he becomes governor, he will veto every social issue that comes across his desk, saying the economy is all that <clears throat> matters, which, of course, that is obviously ranks very high in our poll. He said gun control is a social issue. He will veto that if it comes across his de desk, not touching it. But aren't social issues important? Important to a lot of voters. Yeah. Is, big, is there any mistake. risk there? A big mistake, okay. big mistake. People are passionate about those issues. Uh, and in a sense, what he's signaling is sort of a, a superior position. Well, those aren't big enough for me to consider myself with. He better change his tune because it's going to be fatal to him uh, if uh, he doesn't at least have some core uh, in those groups support him. You really. Preston on this yeah, when he was here, show. you know, and I think it's funny. I even have, I don't have two minds about it, right? I think for if you're a socially conservative voter who cares very deeply and legitimately about, you know, ab restricting abortion or a gay marriage or something like that, I, I would imagine it's painful. Or on the gun issue, which with he which he lumps in, I would imagine it's it's not pleasant to hear a, a candidate in the party that's usually with you on these things say that stuff's not important. We're not dealing with it because that locks in the current status quo in Rhode Island. On the other hand, you know, you also see in this poll. We had about 57% of all voters said the economy and jobs was most important to them, but that sample of Republicans was 68%. So Ken Block may not be wrong that just going economy, economy, economy is what Republicans in Rhode Island are, are the most interested in. And, and Ken Block has always been a numbers guy. Yes. You know, he's a software engineer. Um, you know, you have to think, Joe, right, he has some numbers that he's looking yeah, at I get, when again, making these decisions. Right, we know he's done polling. So obviously when he polled, he found out the Republicans are saying it's the economy and jobs. Social issues are fine, but I'm not going to decide who I'm voting for on those social issues. And again, in a Republican primary, it may not hurt him. But if he wins General. the Republican primary, 
Now he has a problem in the general election, I believe. All right. He has to change his tune. We're going to take a break here. And by the way, to all the campaign managers who give us grief for, quote, polling too early, once your candidate starts raising money, we can poll. That's what we're <laughs> All right, when we come back, we're going to be talking about 38 Studios and Governor Lincoln Chafee's not-so-awesome job approval numbers. Stay with us. You're watching Newsmakers. Welcome back to Newsmakers. I'm Tim White. This week, a political roundtable, and we're breaking down our exclusive Eyewitness News Providence Journal poll on the roundtable. WPRI.com reporter Ted Nisi, Eyewitness News analyst Arlene Violet, columnist for the Providence Journal Ed Fitzpatrick, and political analyst and pollster Joe Fleming. I'm out of breath. All right, uh, <laughs> let's dive right into uh, Governor Lincoln Chafee's job approval uh, numbers. Uh, you know, again, just not great numbers uh, for a governor. As you can see here, 30% say excellent or good job. 65% say fair or poor. 6% 6, 6 say don't know. But you know the number that really stands out to me, and it's not on the screen, but in that mm. fair or poor number, 38% say he is doing a poor job job. Ed, what do, you, what do you make of these numbers? What comes out to you? Well, when you break down the numbers, you see why I became a Democrat, because 41% gave him a favorable job rating. <clears throat> um, but it also, the numbers also show why he, he didn't run again. He, he's, uh, you know, overall, uh, just 38%. And independents give him 26%. Republicans just 12%. So it's not a surprise he, he's not running again. I think we're in the, we're now basically, we are kind of in the twilight of Lincoln Chafee's governorship. He does have a little over a year left, and the, a governor can do a lot in that time. But I think this was the final thing showing to me, okay, he's not going to get a bump out of not running, right. which, Joe, you pointed out in our stories this week. Mm. And I think Lincoln Chafee, to the extent he wants a positive legacy, is going to have to hope that after he's gone, people look back and say, oh, like, you know, we didn't like him, we didn't feel good about him at the time, but he put some good things in place, he signed some good laws, and, and time will tell if, if he can move these up in any way. But clearly, I don't think, I think this shows voters aren't going to come back to Lincoln Chafee. No, I think there's no way they're coming back. I mean, we can see why he became a Democrat. 41% have a favor opinion in 2012 we had the same thing Tim you mentioned about his negative his poor numbers 38 percent that's down in February 2012 it was 48 mm. percent so he's improved a little bit of that you're sense. a glasses half full kind of guy <laughs> Joe Fleming I'll give you that but overall it's not good for the governor at all and I think we can see why he decided not to run you remember in, in Governor Kachiri's numbers just kept going down right. and down and down is, right. there, is there any hope it, for him it's the, I, I do think so much of it comes out of the economic numbers I bet if you did right. a chart which anybody want to say it it's the economy it's the concept, you know, if you did a chart and watched the employment yeah. rate in Rhode Island and tracked it with first Kachiri and then Lincoln Chafee's approval ratings, it. they're very close together because I think people very understandably just look around; they don't see job growth. And you put yeah. a, and you did your, your reporting this week on the unemployment numbers, and they're awful. I mean, there just is no you don't see any, or if there's any growth, there's not a lot a lot of it in Rhode Island. So. Yeah, and I think people just they look for, and you know, I think that's particularly Lincoln Chafee. I always thought if he'd been elected in a time of strong growth nationally which sort of brought Rhode Island along as Lincoln Almond was, maybe Lincoln Chafee, people would have felt like, oh, he's quirky, but he's, you know, he's doing a decent mm -hmm. job. But in a time when, when the economic factors are there and Lincoln Chafee doesn't have any kind of really huge plan to turn it around in the short term, there was no way people were going to be attracted to his style. Uh, Arlene, I want to ask you about this. Uh, we asked uh, Rhode Islanders, 500 registered voters, about the current gun laws and if they think that they go far enough, not far enough, or strike the right balance. 47% of those we polled say that the gun control laws in Rhode Island don't go far enough. Do you think these numbers are strong enough for it to be become part of a candidate's platform? Uh, in the primaries, I, I think not, because first of all, the Democrats are looked as, as the anti-gun yeah. Uh, group, so it won't be an issue there. As far as the Republican primary is concerned, uh, Fung and Block are very similar relative to their approaches, so there's no breakout there. When, though, it comes to the general election, I think that number will have an impact because people at least will go Republican uh, because they think that party at least is better on guns, and they're the passionate people. Don't take my guns away. It's a Second Amendment issue, so we'll have some baby influence when we get to you, the general wait, wait, wait. election. You think these numbers will make voters go Republican? I, I be, yes, I do, because the 47 who don't think it's strong enough and are passionate really about the issue. And I think this is a byproduct of what happened in Newtown, uh, the big discussion going on when this poll was going. 
uh, in the field about mental health and what are we going to do about reporting that. So I think it's just as a snapshot. But once the snapshot disappears, those people aren't that passionate about reform, but the gun people are passionate about keep your hands off my do you gun. Do you think guns are a social issue? Uh, oh, no. It's a good, well, former attorney general, I think it's a public safety issue. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. So I say the thing with the gun thing is look at the Republican voters on this question. What do you got? 25% say they go too far. 26% say not far enough. And 40% say the right balance. There you go. So they were all over the place where the statewide numbers are drastically, drastically different from the Republican numbers. The other hot button issue we had here, 38 studios. We asked uh, if the state should repay the roughly $90 million it now owes to investors for the 38 studios. As you can see, 38% uh, said yes, 50% said no, 12% aren't sure. I think the surprising thing to me based on, on the question is that the, the no's aren't higher yeah. than, than they would be. Um, could, could this be an issue that's strong enough, Ted, uh, you've done a lot of 38 Studios reporting uh, where uh, campaigns start falling in line um, with the voter, what voters think. So Gina Raimondo says pay, pay back the, uh, the bonds, we've got to stay good with Wall Street, but now you've seen Ken Block and even Alan Fung say don't pay it back. It's possible, but you know where actually I think so far 38 Studios could play the biggest role in a campaign is the Attorney General's race. If Dawson Hodgson, who's been a yeah. state, Republican state senator, been the leading advocate for a bigger investigation, mm -hmm. are criticizing the Democratic leadership in the General Assembly on how this went down in 2010, um, if he gets into the race, I think this is one of those things we saw in the 90s where candidates could ride one issue with voters discussed. And as much as Peter Kilmartin's fans who are watching the Democratic incumbent will say, well, it's not his fault we had 38 senators. He was in the assembly when that law passed, and there has not been a strong sense. John Marion from Common Cause always says every time he goes to an event with any group, he's asked, what are we doing about 38 studios? There is a deep, deep public unhappiness about what happened here, and it, I do not think it's been satiated. That? That's a uh, solid yeah. thought. And, and what he says makes a good point. It, it does. doesn't matter that Peter Kilmartin, it, you know, I'm sure he was against the deal. He didn't mm -hmm. like it. It's that perception, because we asked about Lincoln Chafee, remember? Is right. he doing a good, here's a guy that right. campaigned Absolutely. against 38 Studios, yet when we asked in a previous poll, yep. uh, people very negative, very towards negative numbers towards the governor and how he's handling 38 People's Studios. People's overall perception is negative on 38 Studio. The question the question is, will they vote against somebody because of 38 Studio? We have not seen that yet. Right. And I actually think, again, I, oddly enough, I think the Attorney General's race is one of the places where I can they actually see it work. If, think, again, if, but that goes back to then the Republicans' problems in Rhode Island, which is can Dawson Hodgson raise enough money right. because Peter Kamarin has deep roots in the Democratic Party. He's the incumbent. He should have no problem putting together a decent campaign. So that's actually a good question. Can the Republicans see the opportunity and seize the opportunity? That always remains to be seen. Uh, go ahead, know, yeah, uh, well, one candidate that I think, Mark Binder tried to use 38 Studios when he ran against the yes, speaker. Marks, so, yeah. you know, I think it does have, it's such yes. an emotional issue. People have a reaction to shelling and, uh, yeah, it's got potential. Um, we also asked voters, uh, as we do, we track the right direction, right. wrong direction. The question was, generally speaking, do you feel things in the state of Rhode Island are moving in the right direction or do you feel that things have moved in the wrong direction. Right direction, 25%. Wrong direction, 57% uh, remain the same, 7% and 11% aren't sure. But uh, as we look at this, it's actually... From, from three years ago, the right direction's doubled. It used to be 12% in the state of Rhode Island. Yeah. So what we're seeing is a slow, a very slow progress. And I think Ted makes a point. A lot of it's tied to the economy and the job picture. You know, as the job picture gets better, the direction of the state's gonna get better. Uh, we just saw in the Brown poll yesterday, people have a better opinion of the city of Providence, who live in Providence, than the whole state of Rhode Island. Th this is this is relative optimism, we should say. Right. I mean, 25% yes. yeah, yeah. right oh, yeah. direction is I mean, not you look right. into the crosstabs, it's amazing. Okay, so you have 35% of Democrats say we're on the right track. Only 10% of Republicans say we're on the right track. 20% independents. You see a clear, you know, if you're a Republican, well, you're really division? negative. Why? If you're an independent, you say, I, you know, I think Democrats control Rhode Island. And to the extent mm -hmm. that, the, you know, the, the second level policy issues are usually decided by Democrats, they have more reason to be happy. They're in a blue state. You know, you'd think if you're a, someone who's a Democrat, you say, okay, well, Rhode Island's not perfect, but things are, might be a little better than I think. If you're a Republican, you're like, this is a disaster. We've seen that in a number of questions in the survey, the health care question. Uh, we asked about if they're happy with the way that new health care law. 58% of Democrats said yes, 78% of Republicans said no. So there is a big disparity between Democrats and Republicans on a lot of these questions. Ed Fitzpatrick, in the spirit of Thanksgiving, um, when you step back and look at the whole poll, who had the most to be thankful in the poll? 
Uh, I think it's going to be Tavares. You know, in, in the back-to-back -back polls, you know, in uh, the Brown poll and in Oz, they had uh, excellent approval ratings. He was he was the top choice for who would do the best job with, with the economy. Um, you know, people still think the city economy is pretty bad. But they, they, I think the numbers showed that it was moving in the right direction, and uh, they were pleased with city services. You know, like we talk about Gemma and Cicilline, Gemma brought up all the problems of Providence. And you could see some, uh, an opponent of Tavares trying to do the same, but he, he can say, well, look, you know, people are happy with the garbage collection. You know, he's got this $40 million paving bond. You can say people are happy with the road paving. He's got a defense now. You know, you brought up the... Um who would do best to turn Rhode Island's economy around? We only have a minute here. And you said, you know, Tavares topped the list. But really, I mean, those numbers are soft, aren't oh, they here? We yeah, asked no, Block, Funk, Pell, Raimondo, Tavares. Not sure is 23%. Right. Almost one out of four people could not answer that question. And I really believe right now that people don't have a clear picture of which of these five candidates would possibly do the best job of the economy. So, I mean, they have to come up with strong positions on the economy and put some meat on their bones in order to get the voters to come over to but them. But they the all economy. have an opportunity there because clearly right. the voters have not decided, Correct. no large block of voters no. decided, this is the person who can fix the economy. Right. Ted Nisi, Arlene Violet, Ed Fitzpatrick, Joe Fleming, thank you very much for uh, <laughs> joining us on the round table. I hope you all have a happy Thanksgiving happy and Thanksgiving. same with you. If you missed any of the show, it's on online, WPRI.com. There you can also get your fingers dirty with our poll, our Eyewitness News Providence <laughs> Journal poll. I want to thank you for watching and we'll see you next week on Newsmakers.